Ganymede. The largest moon to orbit Jupiter, and simply the largest moon in the solar system, is covered up in an icy shell. But underneath that surface is home to a global underground saltwater ocean that might contain more water than all of Earth's own oceans combined. Naturally, all that water has scientists hopeful that some kind of life could exist on the moon. The moon even has a very thin oxygen atmosphere, and Ganymede has something else no other moon in the solar system has, a magnetic field. A magnetic field is critical for protecting worlds from harmful radiation spewed by the sun. So far, there has not yet been a dedicated mission to study Ganymede, although the JUICE will be the most in-depth investigation of Ganymede when it enters the moon's orbit in 2032. It may have an opportunity to peer down at the surface and study the interior using radar, and clue scientists into Ganymede's potential habitability, Enceladus. Saturn's sixth largest moon is completely covered in clean ice, making it one of the most reflective bodies in the solar system. Its surface is ice cold, but there's quite a bit of activity going on underneath. The moon ejects plumes that contain a myriad of different compounds, including salt water, ammonia, and organic molecules like methane and propane. It is thought to have a global salty ocean, and NASA's found evidence of hydrothermal activity deep underground, which could very well provide a source of heat that's necessary to give life a chance to evolve and thrive. Plenty of mission proposals have been debated for the last several years, including several under NASA. All are geared toward an astrobiological investigation that would look more closely for signs that Enceladus is habitable to life. While digging underground into the ocean would be the most surefire way to determine whether the moon is home to life, we might also catch a lucky break and be able to detect biosignatures that have been spewed up by the moon's cryovolcanoes, volcanoes that erupt vaporized materials like water or ammonia rather than molten rock, Titan. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is another world that sets itself apart from the rest of the solar system. It has one of the most robust atmospheres for a rocky world in the solar system outside of Earth and Venus. It's teeming with different bodies of liquid, lakes, rivers, and seas. But they're not made of water. They're made of methane and other hydrocarbons. Titan is extremely rich in organic materials, so it's already rich in the raw materials needed for life. And it may also have a subsurface ocean of water as well, though this will need to be verified. Scientists have just the mission lined up. The NASA Dragonfly mission, which will send a drone helicopter to explore Titan's atmosphere directly and give us a much-needed sense of exactly how developed its prebiotic chemistry runs. That mission launches in 2027 and will arrive at Titan in 2034. Europa Jupiter's moon has an icy shell that's 10 to 15 miles thick, covering up a huge subsurface ocean that's heated up by tidal forces. That heating is thought to help create an internal circulation system that keeps waters moving and replenishes the icy surface on a regular basis. This means the ocean floor is interacting with the surface, which means if we want to determine whether life exists in those subsurface oceans, we may not necessarily need to go all the way down there. Scientists have found deposits of clay-like minerals associated with organic materials on Europa, and it's suspected that radiation hitting the icy surface could result in oxygen that might find its way into the subsurface oceans and be used by emerging life. All the ingredients for life are potentially here. Luckily, we're set to study Europa in great detail. JUICE will make two flybys of Europa during its time in the Jovian system. But the marquee mission on the books is Europa Clipper, a spacecraft that would conduct low-altitude flights that would attempt to study and characterize the surface and investigate the subsurface environment as best it can. Clipper was launched in 2024 and will reach Europa in 2030. Mars we know that Mars was once habitable billions of years ago, when it had lakes and rivers of liquid water on its surface. It also had a thick atmosphere back then to keep things warm and comfy. And we currently have a rover on the surface, Perseverance, whose express goal is to look for signs of ancient life. It will even secure samples that we'll one day bring back to Earth to study in the lab. So what does that have to do with finding current life? Well, if there are signs of ancient life, it's possible life on Mars still exists. Probably not on the surface, but maybe underground. There have already been a few big studies that have used radar observations to show that reservoirs of liquid water probably exist a couple kilometers below the surface. We've found bacteria on Earth surviving in similar conditions, so it's entirely possible something is living in those parts of Mars as well. Triton Triton is the largest moon of Neptune and one of the most exotic worlds in the solar system. 
It's one of only five moons in the solar system known to be geologically active, as evidenced by its active geysers that spew sublimated nitrogen gas. Its surface is mostly frozen nitrogen, and its crust is made of water ice, and it has an icy mantle. Yes, this is a cold, cold world. But in spite of that, it seems to get some heat generated by tidal forces, gravitational friction between Triton and Neptune, and that could help warm up the waters and give rise to life through any organics that might exist on the moon. Finding life on Triton is an extremely difficult challenge. The only mission to visit the moon was Voyager 2 in 1989, and opportunities for such missions arise only once every 13 years. Callisto Callisto holds the title of having the oldest surface in the solar system, but that doesn't say much about its habitability. Where Callisto shines for our purposes is that it's another moon that's thought to have a vast subsurface ocean, 155 miles underground. Unlike many other potentially habitable moons, Callisto also boasts a thin but diverse atmosphere, containing hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen, a more Earth-like mix than most other moons in the solar system. Our best chance to explore Callisto in the near future comes with the European Space Agency's Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, J-U-I-C-E. Launched in 2023, JUICE is set to arrive at Jupiter in 2031 and will conduct multiple close flybys of Callisto. Ceres The largest asteroid and smallest dwarf planet in the solar system could be home to liquid water, sitting deep underground. Ceres was studied by NASA's Dawn probe from orbit from 2015 to 2018. Scientists are still unpacking and analyzing that data, but tantalizing studies in the past few years suggest there's an ocean sitting 25 miles below the surface and could stretch for hundreds of miles. It would almost certainly be extremely salty, which would keep the water from freezing even well below zero degrees Celsius. Dawn even found evidence of organic compounds on Ceres that could act as raw materials for life. However, it would need some source of heat and energy that could actually help encourage that water and organic material to react in such a way that it leads to life.